As a pediatrician, I talk to a lot of people about the COVID vaccine. Many people are eager to get the vaccine and get it as soon as it is available. But others are hesitant to get the vaccine and they ask some excellent questions. My question is, should I get the COVID vaccine? I strongly recommend the COVID vaccine to all my patients, including teenagers. It's approved for teenagers now, and hopefully it will be approved for younger kids as well. Um, and we'll have safety information. And I will also strongly recommend COVID vaccine to that group. So yes, you should get your COVID vaccine. Is this vaccine experimental? We're in a wonderful age um, where we have so much new technology compared to what the last time we've approved vaccines. Um, and nothing was shortchanged in studying the COVID vaccine. So it was a very fast process uh, compared to approving other vaccines, but there was no shortage of um, patients or subjects on whom the vaccine was tested and they were followed out for the same amount of time for, as compared to any other vaccine that's been studied. So the safety data on the COVID vaccine I, at the time that it was approved for emergency use um, was just as strong as any other vaccine that we have approved. Um, so I was very confident in the safety um, data behind the COVID vaccine, even though we got the information much faster. If I get the vaccine, can I still get COVID and can I still spread it to others? Um, that's a great question. So with the earlier strains of COVID, the vaccine was showing efficacy that it would protect you over 90 or even 95% of the time. With the new strain of COVID, that number is a little bit less, like maybe in the 80s, 80% 80 of the time, but that is still a very effective vaccine. This vaccine is extremely effective at keeping you out of the hospital if you happen to get a quote unquote breakthrough case of COVID. Even though you can be contagious, it's much better to have COVID after being vaccinated than to have COVID without a vaccine. First of all, because you're much less likely to end up in the hospital or on a ventilator, but your, your period of infectiousness and the, the number of other people you infect is going to be much lower, even though it is possible. Will a COVID vaccine make me sick? All vaccines are designed to stimulate our immune system. And our immune system is what makes us feel sick when we have any sort of infection. Um, our immune system triggers a fever and muscle aches and sometimes a headache. So many vaccines have that side effect and that simply is a sign that the vaccine is working. Um, so it's very possible that you could have those side effects of your immune system working, doing its job after the vaccine. And what we've heard is that more likely after the second vaccine. So it's pretty common to have a day or two of feeling kind of lousy with muscle aches, fever, and headaches. Those are not life-threatening um, side effects, but you cannot get COVID disease from the COVID vaccine. I worry about the possible long-term effects of the vaccine on my body. I think what's really useful is to remember that this vaccine works the same way as all of the other vaccines that you had when you were a baby and a young child. So most um, children, um, happily, have had at least 16 different vaccines to keep them healthy um, as young people. and. Honestly, not one of them has long-term effects apart from preventing serious diseases and keeping you alive and healthy. What vaccines do is they stimulate our immune system to produce antibodies. And once those antibodies are produced, there's no long-term um, effect from the vaccine apart from your immune system now being prepared to fight off that disease if you ever come in contact with it. Um, so we know that no, none of the other 16 vaccines that you've had have long-term side effects, and that can be said for the COVID vaccine as well. Is it true that the vaccine causes problems to get pregnant? So I can say that that is just a complete myth about the COVID vaccine. Um, in the early studies, they did not enroll pregnant women because that is the way we do studies is we don't enroll um, pregnant women studying any new medication. Um, but guess what? A lot of women were pregnant and didn't know it when they were enrolled in the studies and they found out later. And none of those women had um, any problems carrying out their pregnancy or having healthier kids. 
Um, and now we know that um, it, it just from the thousands of hundreds of thousands of people that have been vaccinated, that many, many women have, um, have conceived pregnancies and many women have been vaccinated during their pregnancies and have healthy pregnancies. And that is actually now recommended by obstetricians because we can pass on COVID immunity uh, to babies. Mothers can pass on that immunity to babies if they're vaccinated in pregnancy. So the COVID vaccine does not cause infertility. That is one of uh, the myths around the COVID vaccine. And it is also safe for pregnant women. Does the vaccine have a microchip? No, there is no microchip in the COVID vaccine and there is no evidence to support such claims. From a practical and technical standpoint, it would be extremely, extremely difficult to have a chip that one would inject through that tiny needle into individuals. Can the vaccine change my DNA? The difference with some of these newer COVID vaccines is how they stimulate our immune system to create antibodies to fight COVID. Um, and this one is done using RNA, which is not DNA. So DNA lives in the nucleus of our cells um, and it creates who we are and it affects you know, the children that we have. So RNA is very different. It lives outside of the nucleus of our cells and it just creates uh, proteins. So the vaccine does not um, interfere with your DNA. It does not change your genetic makeup. It cannot change the genetic makeup of children that you have after being vaccinated. All it does is uh, tell our immune cells to make antibody against COVID, antibody that will neutralize the COVID and keep it from getting you sick. Are you seeing kids in the hospital sick from COVID-19? So we've had, yes, we've had a number of um, children admitted to the hospital with COVID and some of them unfortunately have been quite sick. Um, this is both due to uh, COVID infection and um, a post-infectious complication called MISC um, that can cause very high fevers and um, heart complications um, as well. Right now, the only children we're seeing admitted with COVID are those who aren't vaccinated. So teenagers who haven't been vaccinated or children um, under the age of 12 who don't have the opportunity uh, to be vaccinated. I haven't um, seen one admission to the hospital um, of a vaccinated child. I wanna do some research before I do the COVID vaccine. When people tell me that they wanna do some research prior to getting the vaccine, what they're probably going to do is go online and watch videos and look at websites that have information that people have posted about the vaccine, not necessarily from reliable sources and not necessarily based on any data. True testing of the COVID vaccine happened when the vaccines were being developed. All the vaccines available in the United States went through the rigorous vaccine testing process, including preclinical trials, stage one clinical trials, where a small number of people were given the vaccine to determine the appropriate dose, phase two clinical trials, where several hundred people were given the vaccine to assess for safety and side effects, and phase three clinical trials, where tens of thousands of people were given the vaccine to determine if they were safe and effective. No corners were cut in the testing of these vaccines. The data is very clear that the vaccine prevents the infection. And I think that if there's anything we can do to not only help, our, help ourselves, but help our communities, is to really uh, improve the vaccination rate and uh, really try to prevent the spread of this disease. And it's really been devastating to so many communities out there that we really, it is a time to think that there's, you know, maybe the risk of infection for me is, isn't that significant, but it could be. So there's for self-preservation, but also as a member of our communities and societies to really think about the greater good and that's the way I think about the vaccine in this setting. I got the COVID vaccine to help my family because it's very important to keep them all safe. I want to get the COVID vaccine so I can protect myself and be a part of the solution. I got the COVID vaccine to be safe around my friends and be able to play for my school's basketball team. I got the COVID vaccine so uh, I wouldn't get sick and so the spread of COVID would stop. Okay, so I got the COVID-19 vaccine because I think it's a great way to fight the virus or disease. I got the COVID vaccine because I don't want to die. I want the COVID vaccine because I don't want to get sick. 
I want to get the COVID vaccine so I don't get COVID-19. Um, I got the vaccine so I could go into stores and like hang out with my friends, I guess. I got the COVID vaccine because I heard about the Delta variant being quite, um, quite dangerous and I didn't want to take that risk. I got the vaccine because I wanted to make a positive change on the world. I got the COVID vaccine because it's the right thing to do. Science tells us that vaccines help us. I trust science. I got the COVID vaccine because I'm in nursing school and I did not want to take the chance of giving it to any residents or getting it from any resident. I want to get the COVID vaccine so that I can walk around my school safely and freely. Uh, I got the COVID vaccine because I trust the science and believe that it saves lives. Um, I got the COVID vaccine so I can hang out with my friends. I got the COVID vaccine so I could finally take my mask off. Caleb Wallace refused to be vaccinated and was a leader in the anti-mask movement in Texas. I can't tell the difference if I have freedom to breathe free air or breathe it behind, suck in air between, behind this thing. He came down with COVID-19 and was admitted to the hospital on July 30th, 2021. He battled the disease for four weeks before passing away on August 28th. He leaves behind three children and a pregnant wife. His brother shared the following message. I want people to slow down and think. This is not a political discussion. This is a healthcare discussion. Turn off social media. Turn off the news. Talk to your doctor. Ask the doctors and nurses that are in the hospital day in and day out dealing with this.